All right, everyone, welcome to tutorial three of Abacus. Today we'll be doing beam, and the problem that we'll be working on is this beam structure right here, and Brian will talk more about it. Cool, yeah, as John said, this is our Abacus beam tutorial. Uh, as you can see in this picture, the example is the example that we did in class with a beam fixed at both ends with a distributed load of 30 newtons per meter acting across the bottom surface. So we'll open up Abacus and get started. So first let's actually set our work directory. Um, this is something we should be doing at the, the start of every assignment. So you just go to file, set work directory, and just create whatever folder you want to save all your jobs in. So for this one, we'll uh, name it something like Beam Lecture. And click on Beam Lecture and set our work directory. Cool. Alright, so first we're going to draw our part. This is a, much of this is the same that we've done in with uh, trusses. Uh, so 2D planar deformable wire. And if we go back to the other document, uh, we can see that the, the length of our beam is two meters. So we can, let's set it a, a grid space of four. So we'll make the approximate size four. Okay. So the first step as always is to draw the part. So we'll just draw a solid beam that is two meters in length. So we'll just dimension it, put it two. And there's our beam. So the next step, as always, uh, click on materials and we'll create our material for the part. So mechanical, we're still doing elasticity, elastic, and Young's modulus was 100 e to the 6 or 100. And then the Poisson's ratio is 0 0.3. Cool. So this is the part that is different from trusses. So with trusses, we didn't actually define the shape of our cross-section because only the cross-sectional area mattered since it was in tension and compression. However, for beams, um, the moment of inertia of the cross-section matters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to sections to create our section. And we're gonna do beam and keep it as beam since we are doing that. And then click on this little icon. It has a couple arrows with an orange grid. And this is how we're going to create our profile or create our cross-sectional shape for the beam. So for this example, we have a circular beam. And click Continue. And it's going to ask us to define the radius of the cross-section. And the radius was 0 0.2 meters. So click OK. So we have now created a section with a certain cross-section and a cross-sectional area. So now, uh, as we did with trusses, you go to assign section, and then assign the section to the whole part, click done, and I'll just use the same cross-section that we just created. And this is another new step using beams. So now we need to define a beam orientation. Um, the beam orientation is used for your bending and moment diagrams. If you go into the PowerPoint, it explains which direction you should choose. Um, in this lecture, we're not going to be going over bending moment diagrams, we're just going to be analyzing stresses, so the orientation does not particularly matter, so you can just click highlight the whole surface, click done, and you'll see our beam orientation in the N1 direction is 0, 0, negative 1. Um, when you're just trying to find the stresses, you can just keep this default um, um, direction and click OK, but like I said, refer to the PowerPoint if you're trying to create a, a bending moment diagram or shear diagram, because it will flip um, the direction of your diagram based on the beam orientation that you have chosen. Okay, so we've now defined our beam orientation. So now we continue doing the same process that we used for trusses, so just go to instances and we will create an independent mesh on instance on our part and click OK. Uh, make sure you don't create two instances otherwise you will not be able to run your job so if you do get the error you can just go in and delete one. Um, but here we just create one instance. So. Now we're going to apply our boundary and our loading conditions. So we go to create a step, 
and static linear perturbation procedure type. So we go to static linear perturbation, click OK. And we have now created our step. Now we need to define our initial boundary conditions. And as I said earlier, um, it's fixed at both ends. So you can do symmetry, anti-symmetry um, for this case since it is a symmetric boundary condition. Or you could do displacement rotation as we've done before and just fix it in all directions. So we'll, we'll do the, the symmetry for this example just to show you how it works. So just click both points. Just hold shift to select both points. Click done. And we're going to do encostrate, which as you can see, it says U1 is equal to U2, equal to U3, equal to U1, UR2, UR3. Basically, it's saying it's fixing in the XY direction and it can't rotate either. It sets them all equal to zero. So click OK. And we have applied our boundary condition at both points, as you can see. So now we need to apply our initial loading condition. So unlike we were doing with trusses, we're going to have a, a pressure load across the surface uh, since it is a distributed load. Um, so we're no longer using concentrated force. Um, you may get a moment applied to it, you may be able to apply a moment. Um, however, for your homework, uh, a pressure load will do. So just click on pressure, OK. And then select the surface that you want to apply the pressure load. And you'll see here, it'll give you two directions um, to, to specify which direction you want to put your pressure load in. So if we click yellow, it's the upwards direction. And now we can enter our magnitude of 30 uh, newtons per meter. However, if you did just select the default, which is down, and then you put negative 30, it would make a load going up, but either works. And here you can see that we, are, we do have a distributed load across the bottom surface. Cool. So now that we have defined our load, we need to go create our mesh. So if you go to module mesh, and then mesh element type, we'll create the element that we're using. So I'll highlight the whole section. And unlike before, we're just gonna keep the family as beam. And um, there are two beam types that you can choose, which is a shear flexible, which is this B21, a two node linear beam in a plane, or you can click qubit formulation and you'll get uh, a B32. Um, and this is just a little bit more accurate. Go ahead and click it, John, and show them. So this is a two node cubic beam in a plane. So this one's a little bit more accurate. However, uh, for this example, and most examples are doing in class, uh, both work just as fine. So we'll just do the, the regular shear flexible um, two node linear beam in a plane. So click OK. Click done. So now we're going to uh, seed our part. And with trusses, uh, remember we made one element for the entire part. However, with beams, there's going to be deformation along the beam surface since it's not just in tension and compression, but it will be bended and have a moment created about it. So usually the default uh, approximate global size will do. However, you can't increase it or, uh, or decrease the global size to, to get a finer mesh. So if we do 0.1 and click uh, OK, apply, you can see, actually let's go ahead and open that up again so we can, we can see what, uh, there you go. So it shows where the, all the, the nodes were placed. And since we used a 0.1 global size, it is applying um, a node, so creating an element every 0.1 units. And since our beam is uh, two meters long, it's going to create 21 nodes. So click OK, and this will do. If you did a, a global size of 0.2, you'll find the result is pretty much the same since this is a simple example. So now we need to mesh our instance. So mesh instance and OK. So we have now meshed our part. And you can see that since it's highlighted blue. Cool. So now we can go ahead and create our job. So double click job. Um, we're just going to be using the model. We didn't mess with the input file. We won't be in this example. So we're going to change our name to beam and continue. Okay. And now we can just submit the job for analysis. All right, so the job has been completed, so we can open up our results. So right-click, select results. And 
right, we just click the, the deform plot shape. And this is showing the, the, the stresses along the beam. You can see a maximum stress is actually occurring at the tips in this case at the fixed end. And if you want, you can go to contours and show the deformation on, uh, on both the undeformed and the, compared to the deformed geometry. So as you can see here, plot contours on both shapes. And that's how that works. And if you wanted to do a field out report to, to um, choose what type of uh, stretch you can do, you can do a report field output. And we have position, select integration point. And this is going to integrate the stresses across the surface to get a more accurate result. And we can choose the sigma x, x. Uh, you can choose the max principle, um, whatever is specified or whatever uh, Dr. Chen asked for. So click apply. And this will be appended to our Abacus RPT file. And if you want to view the node displacement, which you'll probably have to do in your homework, um, go ahead and go to position unique nodal, click U spatial displacement, and this will show the magnitude and displacements in the XY direction. So apply. Okay. Then we can open up our Abacus RPT file. So we'll go to the work directory folder where we saved it earlier. Beam lecture, Abacus. Cool. So here it shows, um, it labels all the elements. And since we created 20 elements, as we stated earlier, it's showing the stress um, in each of those elements. And if we scroll down, we will see our displacement at each of those nodes as well. So let's say we're trying to find the maximum displacement at the center of the beam. Um, you would want to actually create a node in the part that lies on the center of the beam. And then that will be the maximum displacement. But this one is showing the maximum displacement at each of the nodes that we created when we seeded the element. So it's showing a maximum of 13.4 times 10 to the negative 6 meters in this example. And that concludes our beam lecture.